Jeremy Cook here, and I recently bought a 60 watt red and black laser from a company off of eBay. The laser costs about $1,800 plus another $200 to get it in my garage. The laser works really well, and in this video, I'm going to go over the unboxing as well as some of the techniques I use to get it working even better. There's a manual, you get one of those when you buy one of the machines, but obviously, you don't want to see the manual, so let's go ahead and get to the unboxing. So it came in a large crate like this. I guess if you like pallet wood, this is a great source of raw materials, but I'm not a huge fan myself. So when I got this in, there was definitely a lot of work with a hammer and a chisel, getting everything off, getting the top off, the sides off, etc., etc. Just watch your hands so you don't get stuck with some of the nails and feet, of course. Not even kidding, it smells like an orange juice plant. Like, uh, like making concentrate or something. And yes, I do know what that smells like. Yes, I worked a few summers in the, in the orange juice industry. It was actually, I don't really mind that smell too much. It just smells like some really, really powerful concentrate that you might mix up and make some tasty orange juice with. And if you didn't guess, I'm in uh, located in the Tampa Bay area of Florida. So the good news here is that it's actually uh, already stacked on top of the top of the feet, which seems like a that'll make things a little easier as far as mounting. <laughs> Bad news is that it's got a 110 volt input. But then it's got this, which uh, looks like a 220 volt outlet. So, yeah, I don't know. I guess we'll see what uh, what happens with that. At least I assume that's a 220 volt. It does say uh, 60 watts, 110 volts, so that's good sign, CO2 laser. Yeah, that's not actually a 220 volt outlet. It's a some sort of universal outlet, which I don't have a lot of faith in, so I ended up using a power strip. Based on some reading in the manual, as shown here, and some feedback on Reddit, they don't, basically it's, it's not very reliable. The downside is that the laser is not gonna turn on, on and off your cooling and air assist, but I got a bit of a solution for that that you'll see a little bit later. So there it is all unboxed, looks, well, you know, it looks really good. Underneath it was this blower, which was a bit of a problem, but after I lifted it up and had my, asked my wife to slide it out with this by two, two by three, it was out fine. It, it's a bit sketchy, didn't film it, but, you know, as, it, as with anything here, use your own judgment, and it's at your own risk. One thing I think, I had to get this off by myself. Um, I guess I didn't have to, I could have called some friends or stuff or something, but if you got friends to help you, then what are you doing messing with this laser cutter? I guess you can make them Christmas tree ornaments or something. One thing that I think was a good thing here is I stacked up this wood to make it so that the drop wasn't quite as big if I happened to drop it didn't damage anything, so I guess everything was was okay. And of course you'll need some space to put the laser cutter in. I did not have that to begin with, had a lathe here. I sold that for 400 bucks, which helped defray some of the expense of the laser, but I did buy an air purifier for 200 bucks, so as with a lot of this project, even though the laser cutter was $1,800, you add up the liftgate service, air purifier, software, other stuff like that, you're gonna you're gonna add it up to another 500 bucks or so. I haven't really kept track, but you know, count on spending a little bit more to get this all set up. Could use the blower, but you know, didn't really like the idea of pumping that out to my neighborhood. You could argue that you're just burning something, but and I didn't really want to make that argument. So I'm running it through this filter with a carbon carbon filter. Had to make an adapter for the blue hose, as seen here. Printed that out on the 3D printer. It's just a flat top, which I wasn't actually that happy with the airflow on this. So I made something that was a little bit more, more of a nozzle. This is still a bit of an ongoing project. So I'll probably put another video out on that just, just on the development of this adapter. But as you can, can imagine, this will probably work better, but I guess you have to check back to see. Also made this adapter for the ducting that came with it. Put these two hoses together. So hopefully I could Put it out in my garage so it wouldn't even though the air should be fairly pure i didn't want it didn't want it cycling around my garage any any more than it has to a little duct tape and it looks pretty good fit under my toolbox nicely which was a bonus that i didn't think it would and then it almost points out the garage to get it a little bit closer i bought some more more uh, ducting from home depot and they didn't seem to have the right size, so built this adapter on the 3D printer. 
and that that went together nicely so now the area is purified and going out my garage which should be should satisfy everyone involved the orange bucket i bought that from home depot too because the blue one that comes with it doesn't have a cover that seems like a good thing to have i also bought this rack from amazon love these basic racks they're i think about 70 dollars 60 70 dollars and i've got like three of them now this power strip is what i'm going to run everything off of not those universal plugs which are universal sockets which apparently are kind of sketchy also use some zip ties on this to my compressor and the water lines shout out to chad at chad customs chad's custom creations on that idea doesn't usually leak water but got caught there i guess another thing that i did i had ethernet to the garage that way i could power it i could control everything over ethernet i think this was a really good decision this ryuda controller came with the ethernet jack on it and here I'm hooking up a switch to a custom holder that I made that goes on the rack. The reason I'm using this switch here is because I'm not only running Ethernet to this, but I'm also running it to my 3D printer, which was so instrumental in setting things up. Yeah, you're right here. I, I don't know what that was about, but thought I should include that. And there's the switch. There's the input. And then a little power, power plug. And that will go to my laser cutter, and then the other line goes to my Octoprint 3D pr printer setup. Just anecdotally, it seems to run a little bit better as far as the, the video and stuff. One thing you might expect is that when you lift the, the door open like this, it stops the laser and maybe stops the stop this cutting whatsoever. Well, the bad news is mine didn't come with any sort of switch or anything, so I'm installing it here. Try to knock a divot in it so it would stay in the right place. That didn't work as well as it hoped. I should note here that I should be using probably like a real safety switch, but here I'm just using a micro switch. I guess you could use a magnet too, but either way, you really need some redundancy. In my case, I'm not relying on this cover really whatsoever. I'm using safety glasses and the cover is just kind of a supplemental thing, maybe for if bystanders get in my garage or what have you. So obviously do this at your own risk. One thing that I thought was cool is use that, that, that uh, masking tape on the bottom to, to, to hold the chips. That worked really well. It's a 632 screw that goes in there. I had to kind of form threads with that as it was a little bit tight. Locked out on the other side, locked it down pretty well, but to keep it in place, I used some du double-sided masking tape. So that's the idea when the door goes down, hits the micro switch and then cuts it off. And there's that masking tape. Use these Wago connectors to connect it. And then right here is where I made a bit of a mistake. If you wire this into the, this, the key switch directly, I don't know the wiring that well, but I will say when you lift it up, it doesn't always cut off the laser. And it also definitely doesn't stop your, your cut in mid-cut. So you're going to ruin your job and there's a bit of a safety issue with that too. So that was definitely the wrong way to do this, but I redid it. I actually used a different switch whatsoever just in case it was damaged in the first place. Used some heat shrink on that. Soldered everything on. And then there's me installing the new switch, just like the first one. Wires went down in the machine and then went down to the Ruida controller into a port where it's actually supposed to plug, where it's actually designed for that. One side is plugged into ground and one side is plugged into the correct, correct port as outlined in this documentation that I found. The switch is normally open, so when it's, when it's down, it's, it's pulled, pulled to ground. And you got to turn that on in the Lightburn software, or I guess already works, does that too, but I'm just doing that there. I got to turn it on, and after that, it just won't, won't work if the door's open, which I think is a really, really good thing. So here's, here's another little illustration of how that works. Turn the switch on, fire it up, and it starts cutting a square or rectangle, whatever I drew at the time. Starts to cut, looking good. Oh, and then somebody pulled the door up. It stops. 
press enter and it restarts, continues your job and you haven't really lost anything and you've stayed safe. So that's, that's a good thing or safer at least. I personally don't trust this and use laser safety glasses all the time when I'm, when I'm using it. Looks pretty good. Uh, you know, fixturing, just use the magnet there. If you can get a hold of a couple hard drive magnets, that's definitely a good thing for cutting stuff to hold things down. As an illustration of another reason why I use safety glasses is if you look through the top of this, you can see into the cutting area. That seems like a bad thing, so I actually use masking tape on it. I don't know that's going to protect me if a laser laser gets out, but at least it will show me if something's happening. As far as what actually protects my eyes, these laser safety industries glasses are OD6 plus from 10,000 to 11,000 nanometers. CO2 lasers like the one I have are 10,600 nanometers. So an OD is optical density. So it should protect my eyes quite, quite well um, if I happen to get a direct laser strike. Hopefully it's never going to happen, but better safe than sorry, as they say. Another thing I did this, I put an ammeter on this because supposedly you can run a bit too much current to this at with your controller. Now there's some discussion about that being able to arc in certain situations. So as with anything here, this is very much a do at your own risk project. But there I am hooking up the ammeter to the wires, putting some heat shrink on there. And then you cut a hole with this hole saw. Another thing that's a bit of a risk is, yeah, you might hurt your wrist if you don't hold on to the, the drill nicely. Nonetheless, I eventually got through this looking good and then used the deep orient tool on that to keep it from being sharp. I would definitely recommend buying one of these. There's a couple, couple bucks from China, but I've used it over and over and I'm sure it's saved my hands from getting cut many times. Fed everything down in there and then had to cut some holes for the for the screws for the bolts that actually hold it in got a little lucky on that because well i didn't line it up that well but you can see here i'm using these wego connectors the black negative goes into one side into the positive side of the ammeter and the other side the negative side of the ammeter goes out to the l minus or to, to ground so basically you're just cutting into that line that goes out from the laser and running it through the ammeter So to possibly protect myself from arcing, I'm using, I'm also wiring up this, this ground lug to the, the wall. Another thing I did to this for just a convenience standpoint is that I hooked up a cloud free switch to this. It's, it runs on home assistant and basically I could turn everything on for my phone or for my computer. I don't recommend running the laser unattended, but if you need to change some settings or whatever, especially if the laser key is off, it's, it's great to be able to log onto there with your computer, turn it on and modify whatever you want. Big fan of these cloud free switches as well. They actually, as they, the name implies, they don't hook up to the cloud and you can run it through Home Assistant. Also running this light and my fan on there and I'm sure this will be an ongoing project for me. In fact, I've been working on home automation for quite a while and I'll hopefully do a video one of these days, but it's been such a evolving project. It, I never know quite when to actually start the video. So right here, I'm just prototyping something that I'll eventually have on a breadboard, or I actually do. I just haven't done the video yet, but it was nice to be able to cut this out on the laser and then compare it to where I'm going to be using it on my bike's spokes. So take that off. Looking good. A little smaller than I thought it was on the computer. Hooked up to the bike spokes. Looks pretty good geometrically, but then yeah, it's too small. Yeah, it's not going to have enough room for all the components. Another idea that I had was to make a Christmas tree ornament for TCP or The Creativity Podcast, where Pat Regan and I talk about all kinds of things relating to maker subjects, including this laser. So there it is ramping up to almost 20 milliamps, and there's the onboard controller, the built-in controller. Looks looks pretty good, actually. It's a Rita controller. I'm Supposedly, it's the, the best kind that you can get in this class of laser this you know two thousand dollar laser or so so i'm glad i got it glad it came with ethernet and that was a good thing there's that uh 
Christmas tree ornament getting cut out. And I, I got to say, for the cost of materials, for how cool it was versus the cost of materials, this is probably one of the best projects I've ever done. I mean, you know, just cardboards pretty much comes with whatever you buy. And then CR2032 battery, little tape, and uh, LED. Pretty awesome. You can even through, see through the sides of the corrugated cardboard. There's one of the first things I cut out. These lasers can, can of course do acrylic, wood, all kinds of stuff. Not not vinyl because that's it can produce bad gases. You gotta you gotta know what you're cutting, certainly. But overall I'm really thrilled with this this uh, laser. I mean I think it's gonna be an excellent tool and I'm looking forward to using it in more and more of my projects. I hope this video has given you a bit of an overview of what these lasers can do and some of the upgrades you can do initially when getting it. I think this this will be an ongoing feature in my channel. So hopefully you'll check back at some point, leave a comment, like, subscribe, etc, etc. Thanks so much for watching. This is Jeremy S. Cook, signing off.